From vinyls to cassettes to MP3 players, the way we access music is constantly changing. In 2006, two Swedish entrepreneurs, Daniel Ek and Martin Lorentzen, changed the music industry forever when they founded the music streaming service, Spotify. The rise of internet in the early 2000s led to a significant rise in the piracy of music. Spotify made the record labels an offer they couldn't refuse, a legal platform to stream all the world's music. Today, Spotify has roughly 158 million paid subscribers with another 200 million listening free on an ad-supported model. Around 40,000 tracks are uploaded to Spotify daily. Spotify's library has over 70 million songs. Unlike physical or download sales, which pay artists a fixed price per song or album sold, Spotify pays royalties based on the number of artist streams as a proportion of total song stream. It distributes approximately 70% of its total revenue to rights holders, which are often record labels or distributors, who then pay artists based on individual agreements. In 2020, Spotify paid $5 billion to rights holders. Spotify currently pays money to music rights holders via a simple pro rata model. Essentially, this means that the firm pools all of the distributable money it generates each month, then divides up this cash based on the popularity of individual tracks. So if all Billie Eilish songs pull in 5% of all subscriber plays in December, Billie Eilish and the other folks who own rights to those tracks will get 5% of Spotify's distributable money. So even if you don't listen to Billie Eilish, her record label will get 5% of your money every month. If Spotify's monthly revenue goes down, the money it distributes to artists also goes down proportionately. Spotify does not pay a fixed amount per stream as some people think. Many factors affect how much an artist will be paid on Spotify, including where the listeners live, whether the listeners have a Spotify premium account, and what sort of distribution contract the artist has. Let's take an example. The individual monthly premium subscription costs $14.99 in Denmark, while it costs only $1.58 in India. Let's imagine there are 1 million total monthly streams from both Denmark and India, and Taylor Swift has 100,000 streams from both the regions. Taylor Swift's record label and publisher will get 10% of total revenue from both the countries, but since subscription fee in India is lower, Spotify will generate less revenue from India and will give less royalties to Taylor Swift's label and publisher for the same amount of streams. So when a subscriber streams a track using his subscription in India, Spotify pays out 89% less than they would for the same stream in Denmark. Similarly, artists are paid more if more of Spotify's streams come from a premium account instead of a free account. Spotify doesn't pay artists or songwriters directly. It pays rights holders like labels, distributors, and publishers. The artists are paid based on their contract with the record labels. Generally, record labels pay 10 to 20% of the money they receive from Spotify to the artists. Rights holders receive an average per play payout between $0.006 and $0.0084 from Spotify. The main disadvantage of Spotify's pay model is that while top artists bag in a lot of money, smaller artists struggle to make a living. In an interview, Zoe Keating, an independent cellist, revealed that she earns about $0.003 per stream from Spotify. To put this into perspective, Zoe would need 10,400,000 streams per year to earn a minimum wage income. In 2011, British electronic music pioneer John Hopkins tweeted this, Spotify hosts music from over 3 million artists, yet 90% of all streams are shared between only 43,000 artists. That means 2.96 million artists are paid less than $12 a month. Spotify has revolutionized music industry by enabling people access to millions of songs. But it's not as good for artists. If you have kids, don't let them listen to symphonies on Spotify because there's too much sax and violence.